Did you know that Ford is the world's largest family-owned business? Yes, you heard that right. The Ford Motor Company, which Henry Ford founded in 1903, has developed into the biggest family-owned company in the world. In today's video, we will have a look at Ford Motors and how it became the world's largest family-owned car business. Ford Motor Company is an American automobile manufacturer founded by Henry Ford and 11 associate investors. The company was reincorporated in 1919 with Ford, his wife, Clara, and his son, Edsel, acquiring full ownership. They, their heirs, and the Ford Foundation, which was formed in the year 1936, were the sole stockholders until January 1956, when the common stock was first offered for public sale. The company makes passenger cars and trucks, as well as auto parts and accessories. The company's headquarters are in Dearborn, Michigan. In 1896, Henry Ford built his first experimental car in a workshop behind his Detroit home. The first Ford car, the original Model A, was assembled at the Mack Avenue plant in July 1903, following the formation of the Ford Motor Company. The highly successful Model T was introduced five years later in 1908. The demand for this car was so high that Ford had to develop new mass production methods to produce enough of them. Wow, could you imagine the demand for a Model T car at that time? In 1911, Henry established the industry's first U.S. branch assembly plant in Kansas City, Missouri, and the company's first overseas production plant in Manchester, England. In 1913, he introduced the world's first moving assembly line for cars, and in 1914, he introduced the $5 daily wage for an 8-hour day, replacing $2.34 for a 9-hour day to further improve labor productivity. The Model T touring car version's price was reduced from $850 in 908, which is equivalent to about 18 months' salary for an average wage, to less than $300 in 1925, thanks to assembly line production, which is again equivalent to about 4 months' salary for an average wage. More than a century after Henry Ford introduced his Model T and revolutionized automobile production, a member of the Ford family continues to lead the company, who is none other than the chairman of the company, William Clay Ford Jr. In 2014, Henry's last remaining grandson, William Clay Ford, died, leaving Martha Firestone Ford as the family matriarch. The family, which includes Bill Ford Jr., his three sisters, nine cousins, and members of the family's fifth generation, controls 40% of Ford Motors' voting power through a trust through the Super Voting B stock. The NFL Detroit Lions are still owned by Bill Jr. and his mother, Martha Firestone Ford. Since late 1963, Henry's grandson, William Clay Ford Sr., and his family have owned the Detroit Lions of the National Football League. The Ford family is an Episcopal Church member. Although the Ford family's stake in the automaker had fallen to less than 50% of the company's equity as of 2010, the family retained operational control through a special class of stock established early in the company's history and retained when the company went public in 1956. The family owns all of the company's Class B shares, which collectively have the right to elect 40% of the company's board of directors, with the remaining 60% elected by the company's publicly traded common stockholders. In the fast-paced world of automotive manufacturing, the name Ford recalls images of F-Series trucks and Mustangs zipping down city streets and rural backroads. True car enthusiasts might even consider the modern automotive assembly line, a manufacturing marvel invented by Henry Ford himself that has significantly altered not only the way we drive, but also the way we build via history. But beyond the powerful cylinders and rotating wheels of innovation, Ford Motors is built on something else, something that may not immediately come to mind, and that is a family. In December 2008, U.S. President George W. Bush announced an emergency financial rescue plan to assist the country's struggling automakers like Chrysler LLC, General Motors Corporation, and Ford to prevent the country's struggling auto industry from collapsing. The plan made available $13.4 billion in government loans from the Troubled Asset Relief Program, a $700 billion fund approved by Congress to assist the financial industry in the aftermath of the subprime mortgage crisis. The loans would allow the automakers to operate until March 2009, when they would be required to demonstrate financial viability or return the funds. Another requirement was that the companies undergo restructuring. Initially, the funds were made available to General Motors and Chrysler. Ford allegedly had sufficient funds to continue operations and thus did not require government assistance right away. 
Ford experienced increased sales and market share in 2009 after avoiding bankruptcy, which both General Motors and Chrysler did. The increase was fueled in part by the federal government's Cash for Clunkers program, which offered consumers of up to $4,500 toward trade-ins of older vehicles for newer, more fuel-efficient models. Furthermore, Ford implemented various cost-cutting measures and focused on stronger brands. Volvo was sold to the Chinese company Zhejiang Geely Holding in 2010. Several months later, Ford announced the end of the Mercury line. However, as sales slowed, the automaker looked to expand its product line. Ford Smart Mobility was founded in 2016 to develop car-sharing ventures and self-driving vehicles, among other initiatives. The following year, the automaker announced an expansion of its electric vehicle lineup. However, in 2018, Ford announced that all of its passenger cars, except for the Mustang and Ford Focus Active, would be phased out. Instead, the company planned to concentrate on pickups, in which Ford's F-Series pickups were the best-selling vehicles in the United States in the late 20th and early 21st centuries, SUVs, and crossover vehicles. Automobile demand in major markets such as North America, Europe, and China has recently fallen short of expectations. As Ford explains in its annual report, these excuses have raised prices for automakers that have increased their capacity to meet projected future growth. In China, for example, excess capacity in the automobile industry reached 78% in 2018. According to Ford, excess capacity will total 47 million vehicles by 2024. The fierce competition in the industry has been fueled by automakers' rush to enter the massive Chinese market. This has forced companies like Ford to maintain high prices along with declining demand and the expansion of Chinese automakers like Cherry Automobile Co. and BYD Auto Co. The growth of startups like BYD and Tesla has increased demand for hybrid and electric vehicles, boosted the level of competition, and put pressure on established automakers to develop more cutting-edge, technologically advanced models. Henry Ford established the Ford Motor Company to provide the general public with high-quality vehicles at reasonable prices. This American dream was more difficult than it appeared. The company initially made cars the old-fashioned way, but due to the time and materials required to complete a unit, they were forced to add these costs to the price of their vehicles. It took the company about 12 hours to finish each car, which resulted in labor and time costs. Ford, therefore, began using a new method of producing cars. He listed the phases or steps involved in building a unit, then he distributed his workers so that they could each focus on a specific stage. The cars were also transferred from one stage to the next using a device resembling a conveyor belt until all the components were in place. With this technique, labor was reduced from the usual 12-hour period to just 2 hours and 30 minutes. As a result of the system, the cost of the cars decreased. Their most popular automobile, the Model T, had its price dropped from $850 to $290, as we saw earlier in this video. The entire auto industry was furious with Ford for altering the industry's ecosystem when it implemented the new system. 183 of the 200 car companies in America filed for bankruptcy when the Great Depression hit. Other automakers understood they needed to take action to survive. GM chose to focus on building more customized cars, Chrysler and Chevrolet began producing vehicles with innovative features, and others looked for more efficient ways to put cars together. Ford ended up enduring the Great Depression. There will always be a ripple effect when new methods are introduced. When things are going well, no matter how sensible or better the change, everyone is adamant that it must be made. To upset a well-organized arrangement, one must be courageous, obstinate, and possess a steely will. The game-changer is initially perceived as a rebel, a bothersome disturbance, or a novice about to fail. Many people won't recognize the system as an innovation and a legacy until after it had been adopted and accepted, and the game-changer will then be seen as a brilliant trendsetter and leader. The history of Ford Motor Company is unending. The company has had both successes and failures, but thanks to the combined efforts of everyone who supports it, it has endured even the worst war. Along the way, they developed their creativity, adaptability, and capacity for global change. These have helped Ford become the powerful organization it is today, 103 years after its founding in 1903.